In this video, I'm going to instruct you how to make this wooden dice puzzle box. How it works is it's locked. I have magnets up here that keep the lid snug. To unlock it, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's unlocked. You can see the magnets I have up in there. That keeps the lid tight when it's closed. Everything works on gravity feed, so it's impossible to get this number six tight without the magnets. The magnets will suck it in. To lock it, you do the reverse. You go five, four, three, two, one, six, and it's locked. I'm gonna give you several links to download. The first link, one of the links is called Steps. It's a PDF file. It outlines the steps you take to build this, this dice box. There's hardly any detail in, in here, just basically the steps you follow, the details you have to take off the video. Another link I'm gonna give you is for the rails that go around each side. You'll be able to download this, and each side shows how the rails are glued on. So that another link will be for the slides. These are the pieces that go up and down as you turn the box. It'll help you. Each side shows how the slides look. So that another link I did for the hose. All these hose do it like on graph paper. You'll be able to download it and it should help you figure out where to put the holes. On the holes, you want everything to line up if you can. These holes should line up with these holes. This hole should line up with this hole, etc. And, and I believe the last link is gonna be this one, which will tell you where to buy the magnets that I used for the door. The first decision you have to make is what thickness of a slide you want to have. This is a typical slide. It's a piece that slides up and down as you flip the dice around. I would suggest using either 3 16 or a quarter inch thick. I found at Home Depot a 3 16 sheet of MDF, two foot by four foot. It was under $10. What's nice about that is the one side has a black chalk side on it the other side has a white marker side on it. And when you're drawing your lines to cut the slides out, it shows up real nice on the white. Next step is to make a box. This box I made out of pine. It is 3 8 of an inch thick. I did a 3 8 round over on it, so it looks nice when you have the number six side open, you look inside. The measurements of this box are two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And if you're using a quarter inch uh, slide, you want the height to be two and seven eighths of an inch. If you're using a 3 16 slide, you want a 16 shorter, which will be two and 13 16 The main thing is when you're doing your box is you wanna make sure everything is square. All your sides, whatever you do. If you're off square at this point, it's just gonna multiply as you expand it out. Rails are the parts that you glue onto the box that you just made that the slide will fit in between and go up and down as you turn the dice around. I call the rail that goes around the top of the box an exterior rail, which is always made out of the same wood that you're making your dice out of because that's going to be visible when you open number open the side six the internal rails i call anything inside internal i always make those out of pine because pine is a lot easier to sand if you have to sand and adjust there's always some sanding to do to determine your height and your width if you're using quarter inch slides you add an eighth of an inch if you're using five 
three sixteenths slides, you add an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna have an eighth of an inch gap space left, which we're gonna utilize later. I usually run my slides through a planer, not slides, but rails, through a planer so I know they're all the same thickness. Now that you have your box all squared up, it's time to glue the upper rails on. If your box is a pine, you'll want to have these upper rails the same wood as your box is. The inner rails are going to be pine. This opening right here is one inch. So after you glue all your rails on, sand, it, sand everything nice and straight and flush the top. I like to use super glue from this point on. The super glue I use is DAP. When I glue these, I like to put the longer piece here and the shorter piece here, longer piece here, shorter piece down here, and the longer piece here. That seems to lock everything in. If you can see, I kind of duplicated what was inside the box. Now that you have your top rails all done, nice and smooth, everything squared out, it's time to put numbers on the sides. These numbers correspond with the number on the dice. The top is number six. This side is gonna be number five. I on your slides, this part I call the tab. This part I call the slot. What happens is when the slide moves as you turn the dice, the tab will slide into the slot of the corresponding piece next to it. So that's called a tab and that's called a slot. So on these sides, the arrow is a tab. The arrow will go up into this slot here. On the side of number five, I put a mark and that's called a slot. So you put five tab slot. Now take your dice, your box, and turn it like this, and you'll want to turn it like this. And you'll want to number it number four. You put your arrow tab, you can course you can make sure you're right because the tab should go into that slot. Then mark a slot. Then turn your box like this and like this. Number three, put your arrow, and again it should go into the slot on number four. And put your slot. Turn your box again. This is side number two. Put your arrow. It should go into slot number three and put your slot there. And turn it like this. This is side number one. Put an arrow and it should go into slot number two. There's no slot on number one. So just to make sure you have that correct, let me take this box, I'll just turn it sideways and you can see if you have it correct. So this is number five. This is number four. This is number two. This is number one. And the bottom is number three. Now it's time to glue the internal rails on. All the rails are glued to the edge of the side. Let's start with number five. Actually, this rail here, which is number three, we're gonna do last. Let's start with number five. This is your top, number six. Number five has a rail that goes from, from this point down to the bottom of the box. Has a second rail, goes from this point to the edge of the box. Let's go to number four. 
Number four has, all these openings are one inch. Number four has a rail from the opening to the edge of the box. From, the, from this edge to the edge of the box. Again, don't forget it's on the glue to the, only to the edge, not, don't go past. Number three, from the opening, this one you want to take past this edge, as thick as your rails are. This is your number three down here, you want to glue also past. And like I said, we're not gonna glue this one yet. Then we're gonna go number two, is gonna go from inside to inside, from the opening, past. And number one is going to go past up to the edge and inside. Now after you have this piece glued, we want to go back to number three and glue this piece in. So this piece only goes halfway. All this piece does, it gives you an alignment. So when you put this side on, on you have an alignment down here line, to line your, sign up, your side up. So let me show you that again up close. So that's number five. Number four. Number three. Number two. And where's number one? There's number one. Now, what I've done is I made a paper Shows all the sides, shows all the rails, it's all color coded. I'll put a link to this on the video so you'll be able to download, this is a PDF, so you'll be able to download it, print it, and you should be able to tell how the glues are, how the rails are glued. If you're thinking about completing this job, you'll be very happy with it. Everybody be very impressed and everybody will want one. And chances are, you'll make more. So on that, I would suggest the first one you make, like this one, you make out of pine. And when you get this far, you stop. You use this as your sample. You start over again, you take your sample, you look at it, and you can see how everything's done. Just to show you, here's my sample. I use this one to do this one. We're going to be making slides. What I do, I cut myself some 3 inch by 3 inch blanks. And again, I keep telling you, make sure everything is square. The whole dice, the whole box is based on things being square. I've already taken one of my blanks. I've marked it where I want to cut it. What I'll do, I'll show you where I got. This is the first mark I, I make, the one that goes across here. Where I got that measurement from was from measuring from the bottom rail to the top rail minus the thickness of the rail plus a little bit. My rail is 3 16 so I went 4 16 which is a quarter inch. So I took this measurement minus a quarter inch and that gave me this line. And then I put my piece there. I marked where the tab's gonna go. Don't forget this is one inch opening I made the tab three quarters of an inch. And then, this line, find my pencil, this line here is right on the edge of the box. You wanna make this line a little, maybe a tad bigger because we're gonna to have to adjust the slide once we cut it out. So, this is a cutout and this is a cutout. What these two lines are is what I did. I took my 
see, my rail I put across there and I marked it. And I did the same thing on the bottom. I put the rail and I marked it. Then I drew an eighth of an inch, about an eighth of an inch up here, and that's gonna be cut out. And don't forget, this is the side of the box. So this line comes from being in the box like this. This line here has to be further in than this. And what I do, I measure from there to there is one inch. I mark it. You've already got this line. Then I mark an eighth inch here, maybe a little bit more. And that's what you cut out. All right, here's the slide cut out, number five. It should look like this. Why this is cut out is so when it's up against the side of the inside it slides, it, this isn't touching the side, it gives it less resistance. Same thing on this side, when it's inside, only the small, a small section touches the side. Now these lines are determined, you see how it fits in there. When you tilt the box, it's gonna go up. When you tilt it down, it's gonna fall down. That's how it moves. The top of the, the number six side is, all the sides are three eighths of an inch thick. So with this slide pulled up, it's gonna be going into your number six side and it's three eighths of an inch. So we don't want to be any bigger than a quarter inch. So this mark is a quarter inch from the top of the box to the top of the tab. So that needs to be cut. Then you got to check this side and see where you want to cut it. You want to cut just about even with the side here. So here it is all cut. As you can see, when it slides up, it's only gonna be like a quarter inch above the top here. This top slide, top number six side is three eighths of an inch thick. And you also have to watch this clearance. What I do, take a piece of wood, put it there, and make sure it slides real easily where you don't want too much of a play in here. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch play is all we want. To understand how these slides work, I'm gonna use this number four, which I pre-cut. It's not completely cut yet, but I'm gonna use it as a demonstration for you. When this slide number five is up, like up to the top, it's locked number six. Your number four slide is gonna be slide into will slide up and go into there. And that tab there will lock number five from falling. Our concern is the clearance at this point. We want just a little clearance here. If we have too much, the number five slide is gonna be sloppy. The opening below doesn't matter. So when you tilt the box like this, this is gonna drop down it's going to clear and your number five can slide. So here's my number four blank. This line right here is this height, is a height between the top of this rail and the bottom of this rail minus the thickness of the rail, which is 3 sixteenths. So I made it, I mean, rail is 5 sixteenths. So I made it 6 sixteenths, 3 eighths of an inch shorter. So this what that allows is for this slide to go up that much. Oops, have it upside down. So that's where that that's where that line came from. And then your tab line here, put like this. And you have your number five in here. Number five pulled up. And you can see where to mark it. Hopefully you can see that. That's where your tab is. So you draw your tab line. I use, again, I like my rails. I use a rail thickness. 
Then across this line that you just did, again, I use the rail thickness, mark the bottom, that mark and this mark. I go on the bottom, mark and mark, then here I'll come in like an eighth of an inch. And then this again, like I said, you go one inch down from the top, roughly, and come in so that it clears. You want to come far enough so that it, it's inside the box. See? So this is had the same marks I cut out I showed you earlier. So this goes in number four. And it comes up a little more than five sixteenths of an inch. Move it up. Take your straight edge across the top. And that's where you want to cut it. Then you take your straight edge across the top of the box here again and mark it. That's where you want to cut it. Okay, here's a piece all cut. Got the top, top cut off, got the sides cut off, put it in. You can tilt it down, push it up, verify that the top does not go over the top of the box. This you have to verify by putting a side on it and you can see how much play you have in it. And that'll slide easily. It'll make a slide. Sometimes what I do, I'll leave these a little bit longer and I'll adjust it down after this point. It, so this is number four. And you just repeat this process all the way through. Number three, in fact, if you look, the pieces are almost interchangeable. Then you go to number two, again almost interchangeable, it's got to be a little higher. And number one is just going to have a tab. Don't forget, after you make a slide, test it. We just made number four, so I'm going to put number five in, then I'm going to put number four in, and I'm going to slide it shut. I'm going to verify that it clears, there's room in here. Another thing I do, which I haven't done on this one yet, is I'll round this corner off just a little bit, not much. That way when it slides up, it's not hitting the straight edge, but just a tad. I like to correct something I told you earlier. On slide number five, I told you I got this dimension by taking the difference between the bottom rail and the top rail and deducting the height of the rail. I told you my rail was 3 16ths of an inch. It wasn't, it's 5 16ths of an inch. So I deducted 3 eighths of an inch. That's where this measurement came from. The other thing I like to go over is I told you, test your slides when it goes up Make sure it clears this way. Make sure it moves. But I forgot to tell you, when it's down, make sure that the tab is below the top. If the tab is up, this slide won't move. If these other two, if the tab is the correct height, this is correct. To compensate for that, take it off the bottom. Don't take it off the top. All right, now that you have all your slides cut, adjusted, everything fits fine. It's time to put a washer in and zip ties. I don't know if you can see there's two zip ties on the back, it's black. The reason I do the washer is I like the extra weight so I'm sure the slide's gonna move. Let me demonstrate. Here's number five, number five. There's no doubt about that slide moving. What I do is on number one, two, and five, I use an inch and a half washer, the thick one. I countersink a hole with a fastener bit and I glue it in. On number three and four, 
it's smaller. It's an inch and a quarter. And they don't make inch and a quarter washers, so I had to go to an inch and a quarter fender washer, which is thinner. Same process, you foster a bit, you drill it out. You don't go through the bottom, almost through the bottom. I double, I put two fender washers in. The reason I use the zip ties is friction. The zip ties are the only part that's touching the, the sides as it moves. Less friction. That's the only reason I use it. Back to the washers. I'm not 100% sure you need the washers. I like the washers just to ensure that I know it's gonna slide. Plus, I like that clinging noise. So if you feel that your slide's gonna slide without the washer, using zip ties, don't do the washers. To verify, they're gonna slide with a side on. How you do that, you take side number five, I always start with five, put it in the compartment, take a piece of wood, put it on top, hold it tight, and verify it slides. Do that all the way through, down to number one. If for some reason it sticks a little bit, you can sand the zip tie down a little bit. I would sand it on this side versus this side. My thinking is, as you flip the box, this is the side that's always going to be hitting the, the surface. This side here will be up in the air, so a little sanding here won't matter. The last thing you want to do to your slides is take some sandpaper. This is 280 80 grits fine sandpaper. Just go over any edge that will touch anything on the box. Real lightly, make it nice and smooth. If you want, you can do the same thing on the box. Just real lightly, smooth things out. Like I said, I use a 280 grit sandpaper to do that. And you can feel the difference once you do it, how nice and smooth it is. We're gonna start the sides now. And all the sides are 3 8 of an inch thick around this, this way and the side sides. They're all 3 eighths of an inch thick. This is where you get very creative. You can make your dice unlike anybody else's and you can really super impress people by doing it. As you know, this dice I'm making out of pine. Pine has no really grain on it. It's kind of blah. So what happens if I were to take a piece of wood, like maple, that does have grain, I use make my box out of maple instead. What I can do is I can start at the bottom here and make the bottom my side number five. Then as I roll the dice around, the next piece is going to be my number six. And I roll it around again, my next piece is going to be number two. And when I wrote it the last time, my next piece is going to be number three. If you did that, as you roll your dice around, the grain's going to follow. The side pieces here, number one and number four, really doesn't matter. So that's a thought. Consider your grain on the wood you're building. Another thought would be, which I'm actually doing, is what if you take a piece and you butterfly it? This piece is butterflied. I didn't use a bandsaw, I used a table saw, so it's a little bit not exact. But you can see the butterfly, and I'm gonna roll it around this also. So not only am I gonna have my grain going like this, but it's gonna be butterflied. And I'll do the two sides butterflied. So that's a thought. Another thought would be what we do on these sides, if they're solid like this, we take a half inch Fossner bit and we drill a hole quarter inch deep. And that leaves an eighth of an inch on the bottom. And that's the numbers, you know, one hole is one, two is two, etc. But what would happen if you took a piece and you had a quarter inch piece? 
and you drilled the holes all the way through. Then you took a piece like walnut, say an eighth of an inch, and you glue it on the back side. Then when you look through the hole, you'll see the walnut. Or even, which would even be nicer, you take a piece of purple heart and put behind it. Also, see the wood on the sides, that eighth of an inch. And that would wrap around the whole box. When you're cutting the sides, remember that the width of sides five, three, two, and six are gonna be smaller than the widths of four and one. Four and one are gonna be larger. That's because you're gonna have a side on each side, so you can add three eighths of an inch to this width. We'll talk about that in a minute. The first thing you have to do is determine how long of a piece you need to wrap around your dice this way. Add a little extra. The major, the most important cut you're gonna make is how wide this piece is. Try to make it exactly the same as the width of the box. If you make it too small, you're gonna have a gap here. If you make it too big, you're gonna have to do some sanding or adjusting. So spend, take a couple cuts at it, sample boards, and try to get it exactly like you want, exactly so there's no sanding involved. When you measure your height, measure from the top of the rail to the bottom of the box. Then add 3 eighths of an inch because you're gonna have a side down here. On side number five, you're gonna glue that first. Side number five is gonna be, be glued to the top and we're gonna have 3 eighths of an inch hanging over. 3 eighths of an inch hanging over. And this side, number three, is gonna be butted up into that that side. So you have to add 3 eighths of an inch to this measurement. I would add a little bit extra because once you have it glued up, it's going to be hanging over. You can always trim it. So as you know, I changed my mind, which my wife says I do all the time. I decided to go with the grain around the box. So I'm going to start with side number five, make that the start of the grain. Let the grain flow this way. And number three would be the end of the grain. So what I did on the, the poplar, I picked out the grain I wanted to start with. I cut, actually cut a couple inches off to get this grain where I wanted it. So these are already cut. Here's side number five, and here's side number six. As you can see, the grains match fairly good. The only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do a 3 8 bevel round over on this edge, but still you'll be able to see the grain flow through. Now when you cut these pieces, I have all four pieces cut. When you cut them, it's very important to number them and, and label them up top. So it's like this. So this is side number five. I put five top. This is side number six. I put six top. And same thing with two and one. The top means the top is going to sit on top of the box. The other end is going to hang over so your other side can go into it. Don't forget to number them correctly. And when you number your number two, make sure you number it low because it's going to be sticking up because your number six is going to slide into it. So don't put any marks on the top part. Keep your marks down low. I told you we're not going to talk about the sides four and one until a couple minutes, but it may be a little bit longer. What we've got to do first is we've got to drill the holes on these four pieces. Then after we drill the holes, we're going to glue them up. Then after the sides are glued on the box, then we'll get our measurements for side number four and side number one. When you lay out where the holes go on your sides, what I do 
I went on the computer, I like Excel. I did a, a chart, each space is an eighth of an inch. I took my measurement of my width of the box and the height. I made the marks where all the holes are gonna be, where the holes are gonna be. Everything's lined up except number two. I put an extra X there and extra X there. I didn't want my number two to be that far apart. I want it to be a little bit closer. I had built one before that, the two was far apart and I didn't like it. So once I get this, oh, also when you make this design, you have to remember, you have to deduct for the eighth of an inch, three eighths of an inch down here. So you can square this up, you gotta come up three eighths of an inch. Once I have, this is for side number one and four. Once I have this made, I put it on file folder paper. Just take it on top and punch a hole, and that gives me my marks. Again, I mark the top. This is top number six. So when I have my number six, my number six side here, here's the top. I put this on the top like that, and you notice the space is bigger here. That's because there's a three inch space here for the side that comes in from behind. Plus, you're gonna be adding three eighths on top. So once you add that piece on top, everything evens up and you have three eighths on each side. So once you have it like this, I just take a punch, march each hole, then I take it out, take a Fosner bit, and go down a quarter inch half inch Foster bit. So this is five, I mean six, I'm sorry. This is my five. All the holes line up. If you look sideways around the box, all the holes are gonna line up. And this is number four. Now you notice number four is larger because I told you that side is larger. But basically you do the same thing. Here's number three. And what I did on number two, like I told you earlier, instead of taking the two dots out here, I made them closer. I like my number two holes closer. And here's number one, which is on the larger sides. So after you get your sides cut, get, get this figured out, go ahead and put them on, do a little punch, go foster drill, I like to use a drill press so I can limit how far down I go and go down a quarter inch. That'll leave you an eighth inch on the bottom. When gluing your sides up, you start with number five first. You put the top of number five on the top of the box. And this side should blend in with these rails you have down here. This side's not on yet, so it should match right there. So I'll go ahead and glue that number five up. Then after number five, you glue number three, and number three will butt up into the bottom of number five. This is number three top. You should have little, a little lip here that you need to trim after you're done. And this number three, is the one that we use that half piece on to, to set the side. So after you have number three on, you have to do number two, but don't glue number two on until you have the magnets. You gotta put the magnets in before you glue number two on. Then after you have the magnets on, in, glued in, Again, the top is butted against the, the bottom of number three and you should have a little leftover for trimming. When you put the magnets in number two, you don't put the magnets on number six. Number six, we do after the other sides are on and the, number six is sliding, then we can do the magnets on number six. How you do the magnets is you take your side number two, you put it in place by holding it, then you take a pencil, mark the top, where the top hits the side, 
Then you take your side number six and lay it in there. Take your pencil, mark the top of where number six is. And that'll give you a line, you know, space. Then what I do, I come in three quarters of an inch from each side and center the space. I drill a hole for the magnet. The drill size you want to use is 13 64ths. If you use a quarter inch drill, which I did on this one, they look kind of sloppy after a while. And 13 64ths fits perfect. It's a nice snug fit. As you can see, it's nice and clean. Now when you drill your hole for the magnet, the magnets are polarized. So they're gonna to stick together. What I do, I drill a little hole. I'll take the magnets, I'll push in the hole, and I can see if I've gone deep enough. If I gone, didn't go deep enough, I'll go a little bit further. Chances are, you're gonna to go too deep. I do that all the time. So what I do in that case is I take some sawdust and put sawdust in the hole, then I'll pack it with the magnet until just the top of the magnet is, is even with the hole. And at that point, you go ahead and put super glue in, take your magnet, put it in the hole, and flush it out to the, to the surface. That's how the magnets are done. I'm gonna put a link on, my, on the site where you can buy these magnets. And at this time, we don't care about polarization on the magnets. Magnets either pull together or they push apart. We'll deal with that when we do number six, the magnets on side number six. After you mark where you want your magnets to be drilled, I always use a center punch to mark the center hole. When you glue your sides on, don't forget to put your slide inside. When you route the grooves or your side number one, side number four, and your top number six, I do the top number six first. I use a 3 straight bit to route this. As you can see, it goes just about that line. You gotta do both sides. Make sure you stop on your long side, not the top side. So that's 3 sixteenths. I use a router and a table with the fence to set this up. And then when you're ready to do your, this route, this groove is center on your, on your side. Should be evenly on both sides, as close as you can get it. And when you do this one on your side number one and number four, this is one eighth inch straight bit. A little smaller than the 3 sixteenths because what happens is when you try to put your piece in there, if you go 3 sixteenths, it's gonna be sloppy and it's gonna be hard to keep it at 90 degrees. So change your bits, make it at 1 eighth. And when you set it up, you set your 1 eighth bit to sit, you put this piece back on your fence, set the 1 eighth inch to fit right dead center of your 3 sixteenths if you can. And the distance on this, if you can see, I was a little bit short of the line here. So the sides will be short and your top will, will extend a little bit beyond. The depth of these, I made this 3 eighths of an inch and this a quarter inch. The slides I'm going to use, I use plastic, you can use wood if you want, are going to be a half inch wide. So that leaves a quarter inch in here, quarter inch sticking out, an extra eighth of an inch you can use for trimming if you have to trim your sides a little bit and still give you enough room for it to slide. Another thing I do is when I groove the number six side, I take another piece I have, which is the same thickness, I do the same groove all the way through. The reason for that is when you glue your sides on, 
you got to put this piece there and put your side on with a tab on it and go in there in the groove and that'll let you set your height. Then when you, and number six is going to be too big to do this side, so you'll take this smaller piece and do this side also. That way you can set your numbers, your sides up perfect so they're not warped or, you know, they're perfect fit. I was thinking if you don't have a router with a table and a fence, you could use your table saw. The most important thing if you are going to use your table saw is to have a zero clearance plate. That zero clearance means there's no space between the blade and the side of the plate. If you don't have zero clearance, you take the chance of this piece falling down when you're sliding it through. Here's a piece I made as a sample. I made one pass all the way through. I took some eighth inch uh, pieces I had and glued the ends, and that gave me my, that gave me that that piece there. But of course, you're going to see the eighth inch on each end. So that's the eighth inch. To get the three sixteenths for this side, you can either, before you glue these in, you can take sandpaper and run it, or if you're, if you're a little bit off, like this one's a little bit off center, if you ran it this way, take your piece, turn it around, and run it again, and that'll center this, this groove. Then you can check it and see how much larger it is in your eighth inch. Hopefully it's like 3 sixteenths of an inch. But that'll work also. And then on that one, you only have to glue up, plug up one end, because the other end is open. Okay, we're ready to glue the sides on. I always glue side number four on first. Make sure that your, your lock is down on number five. You should have no trouble. You can see it from inside number four. So put your slide in, put your number four side on, use your door, your number six door, lock it in, the, in your slide there, and use that to adjust your height and don't forget to do your width, but use your door, to, you want it just touching the top so it slides. So after you get number four all done, you want to do side number one. If for some reason this lock is up because you've been moving it, go through the process of unlocking it. The process to unlock, remember, is one, which isn't actually going to be there yet. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that should fall down. If it doesn't fall down, then something's wrong in here. So once it's down, put your slide in, put your, your door on, but use that extra piece that you cut. Remember that short piece? That goes on the slide. Like that. And that's what you use to adjust your height of this side. So it's flush with the top. So both tops should be the same distance you can double check it. That should be the same as this side. And that will mean that your number six top will slide in there easily. Of course, in my case, maybe in your case, my number six is about a, oh, it looks like maybe a eighth of an inch at the most too big. So I'm going to have to trim off a little bit to get to fit in here. But make sure if you trim it, you trim the same amount off both sides. Don't trim it off one side only. If you're an eighth off, trim a sixteenth and a sixteenth. And if you get really close and take it on a sanding block or something, sand it and get it to fit. You want to, you don't want a snug, 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 snug fit. You just want a nice, tight fit, but still be able to move it. And then we have to work glue the magnets on the end. At this point, you can go ahead and take a sander, router straight bit, whatever you have, and trim all the edges. Get all the edges trimmed off so you have a nice smooth box going all around. Make sure everything is nice and flat. And then we'll come back and we'll do the magnets. And once the magnets are done, we'll have to do a do our hole in here for the lock piece to come up. 
So go ahead and trim it all up, make it look really nice. You have your box all trimmed up now, sanded real nice. Looks really good. So now you want to put the magnets on side number six. What you do, I assume by now you, you got your side number six all trimmed. So it slides in there, hardly any slot. What you want to do is take your magnets where they're located, draw a pencil line on the top, a little, little line. Close your door, transfer the line to the top of your box. That's where you're going to put your magnets. You drill your holes, put your magnets in there. Now I told you the magnets either pull together or push apart. So to verify which way you put your magnets, you take a magnet, you take a magnet and you move it over towards the magnet on the door. I mean on the back side. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. I'll try to do it. Watch the magnet. It's gonna snap right in place. And you do the same thing on the other magnet. So you got two magnets pulled together. That's what you're after. Get a marker, pen or something, and mark the back side of these two magnets. That is a side that's going to go inside the door here, side number six. But make sure you get this magnet on this side, this magnet on this side. If these are reverse and reverse polarity, the door may not close. It'd be pushing against each other. I'll tell you before you glue the sides on. Of course, you have to glue these tabs, the slide tabs in. On my prototypes, I used aluminum, which I thought, you know, was a good idea, but after a while it took too long to cut them, so I gave up on that. I found a sheet of eighth inch plastic I had laying around, so I ended up make, using those. The tabs are a half inch wide. That, gives, that leaves you your quarter inch in here, it leaves you a quarter inch out, and your top is three-eighths of an inch, if you remember. So that's an eighth of an inch play. You can cut the sides off. The most important thing is that when you do your tab, if you make it out of wood, make sure you have a, a snug fit. I told you before, if, if it's a loose fit, you may have trouble with it being a 90 degree. It's very important that that is a 90. Here it is after I routed it. When I route it, after that trouble I had with my prototype, I like to take two passes on my routing. I'll cut maybe half the 3 8 round over, and I'll go back and cut the other half. The trouble is if you do that, you kind of forget where you are, what sides you've done you haven't done. So what I've done is supposedly, say this is your router bit on your table, however you're doing it, I would go this side, this side, this side, this side, then take your dice and flip it over, do this side, this side, this side, this side, and then go like this, do this side, flip it like this again, this side, this side, and this side. That way you'll get all the sides, if you, don't remember that, you can always take a pencil or something and mark the edges that you've done for your second pass. And it's looking fairly nice. You can't really see the grain that good now as far as it's following, but once we get the polyurethane on, it'll pop. And of course, you can test your top, see if it's gonna work. Works. That's what yours should be like. Nice, fairly snug, and pops right in place with those magnets. Next step is we're going to do this notch in here for this tab to come up into. To mark where your notch goes, you measure from the back of the box to the front, back of the box to the front inside of the notch. And that's where this line comes from. Then you measure the thickness of the opening, that's where this line comes from. 
and your notch, your tab should be centered. So you find your center mark and make it one inch. I'm going to use Frostner bit to drill down. That's what that center line is for, to drill down. Then I'll take a chisel and finish it off. 3 8 Forstner bit to drill this out. I went ahead and locked my box. You lock it, we're going 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Took a measurement of my tab. I have to go a quarter inch deep for that top of the tab to clear. So I'm going to go a quarter inch deep. The main thing you want to do is you want to make sure this line doesn't creep over too far. You want to keep it right there. You can go this way a little bit more. It doesn't matter that much. But this is your important line. If it moves too far, you'll have a lot of play this way. <clears throat> With it there, you'll just have a little play, just enough for the magnet to pull it. What I ended up doing, I was able to just take the forcer bit and make several passes with it. I really didn't have to use the chisel at all. Like I said, I went quarter inch deep. You can see little pin marks in there where the Forstner bit went. And cleaned it up real nice. No chisel, just had to do a little sanding. So, let's test it. To lock it, we go five, four, three, two, one, six. Hopefully it's locked. Locked. Like I said, you don't want it to move too far. You want to be able to just have a snap back. So watch how, where you cut that groove. Well, it's been a long haul. You're all done now. All you have to do is finish it. I'm going to try polyurethane on mine. After I get it all finished, I'll show you what it looks like. But I think it turned out really nice. Hopefully yours did too. Yeah.